So something I'm really, really, really excited for. I mean, probably the biggest game I played when I was a kid. Um, probably the most hours I put in was Sonic the Hedgehog. I, I thought played. you were a Nintendo guy. I was. Huh? Nintendo was, I mean, I put a lot of hours in that, but my formidable, formidable years of gaming was really spent with Sonic. Another old fashioned? <laughs> I have my tea. I haven't even opened yet. Um, it's hardcore. Yeah. Well, you don't know what's in it. I don't. I mean. Well, you just now opened it, so I imagine it's tea and water. Well, I mean, I don't know the things in it, but there might be some high fructose corn syrup. Oh man. You gotta That's be careful of that. Oh, oh, lemon living dangerously. Yeah, there's lemon in it. Um, I was a Nintendo guy, but I had a Sega Genesis. I never had a Super Nintendo, so I played a lot of. Sonic. Tons of it. So this year, they're going to be releasing, Sega's releasing Sonic Mania, which goes back to its roots, but a little confusing because they came out with Sonic 4 just a couple years ago, which was supposed to do that, it was supposed to bring it back to its roots. So so this new Sonic Mania, they're putting in a lot of time and effort into making this, because I think they're realizing that their franchise is almost dead. Sonic yeah. is almost dead. I don't, I don't know what what causes them to be so terrible with Sonic? Like, like, like they had a simple formula. It's a hedgehog. He runs fast. He collects rings. Mm -hmm. How, how do they mess it up? I mean, when they did Sonic on the Dreamcast, the very first one, it was on 3D. It was amazing. Yeah. I think they, I think they nailed it with that. that Sonic was, Adventures. Yeah, Sonic Adventures. Adventures. The second one, not so much. But that wasn't their fault. The Dreamcast was Dreamcast was dying. They had to push it out the door. Yeah. You know. So they took a lot of features out of that that they didn't want to. You know, they, they had to shorten the game up. But even then, I mean, the level design in it was still really, really good. Yeah, yeah. It seemed like, you know, Mario games are always good. I mean, Nintendo always brings out. You can't say that there was a bad, like, Mar Mario game besides maybe, uh, like, Mario's Missing. Or, you know, some of those kind of educational type Mario games. Um, but Remember that time you died in Mario's Mission? You can't die in Mario's mission. Missing. Oh, yeah, no, you can't die in that game. You died. <laughs> no. I remember that. That's no. how bad you are at that no, game. You, you cannot die in that game. They do not oh, allow you to die. But um, it's like the McDonald's game or the Barney game. Now I'm right. off, off, off the Sesame Street game. But anyhow, um, you know, Mario's always good. And so is Sonic. Sonic, you would imagine, you know, every release was pretty good. You know, all the ones for Genesis, all the way up to Sonic and Knuckles. Anyway, one through that. There's four games. Sonic CD came out on the Saturn. A really good game. Um, it, or, no, that came out for uh, Sega CD, I guess. Well, you got to kind of wonder, like, what do you expect from a company that thinks that a game's going to be a lot of fun with a kid dressed up as a chicken rolling an egg around? What game is that? I don't know. What are you talking about? Sega came out with a game... You you were a kid dressed as a chicken, rolling egg around. It's a puzzle game, but it was really difficult. They made it seem like it was geared towards children, but it's an actual game. Yeah, super difficult game. You don't know what it's called though. I don't remember. Okay, well, we'll, we'll have to look that one up. We might make a whole topic on on that game because that sounds crazy. But that, but they had a winning formula, like you said, with so with Sonic, um, and then they just started going crazy. I mean. Obviously, yeah. Sega stopped making consoles, so they started making Sonic games for other systems. The GameCube ones were just weird. Um, there are a few Wii U ones, this generation, just weird. Yeah, it's like, okay, what would be really cool? What if we gave Sonic a sword and Shadow some machine guns? Why? Yeah, they just went weird. So, this one's actually coming back to the roots. Uh, looks like they're putting a lot of time in the level design. And getting back to what makes Sonic great. Now... You know, I did say I, I loved all the Sonic games on Genesis, but if I'm being fair, probably when I was a kid, I don't think I got past like the third zone. You know, like I got to the casino level and I was just happy. You know what I mean? I didn't really care for Sonic Spinball. What they pinball. Called? Sonic Pinball. Didn't they call it Sonic Spinball? No, no, yeah, no, yeah, Spinball. Yeah. Now, I really like that game. I spent some time on that game. It's a pinball game, and you go through the levels and collect the emeralds. I didn't never knew what I was doing. I actually have a copy of it. I've always wanted to put it in a, 
and just to see it again. Yeah, if we revisit it, it might be a little bit smarter about where to go and what to do. But I was just lost. Playing. But I just had so much fun. I love the music. You know, actually, a uh, Sega, uh, uh, and it's hard to say it's a Sonic game, but uh, Dr. Robotnik's Mean Bean Machine yeah. was absolutely amazing. It's a puzzle game. It's the like Dr. Dr. Mario. Yeah. You know, that was who was going to compete with it was the Mean Bean Machine because mm-hmm. you can't use pills. You have to use beans. Yeah. Well, yeah, trademarks. Yeah, you know, I, I just want to mention while we're talking about it, the music of Sonic. Sonic Adventure had, like, some of the best music. I mean, it was almost very level-specific. It was, like, each level had its own theme song, and it wasn't just really generic. I mean, they had, like, voices, and it was crazy. Yeah. Like, I think that's one thing that uh, Sega's always nailed with Sonic was the music of the game. Mm-hmm. Even if you go back to Sonic 2, you know, there's, like, I remember being a kid... Uh, there's like an underwater level. Mm-hmm. Uh, you go underwater and you have to like grab these air bubbles to be able mm-hmm. to breathe, mm-hmm. right? And like I remember standing there for like two or three minutes, and my dad's like, "What are you doing?" I was like, "I swear to God, I hear voices in this music," because you know this was back in Genesis time. They didn't have voices or anything, right? They just had you know blips and whatever they used to program it, right? Really simple music. Although they did say. Sega! They did say that. That was exciting. But, you know, so we just stand there letting Sonic collect the bubbles and keep them alive, and we just, like, intently listen, and we're Are like... Are you talking about as he collects the bubble? No, not, not as he collects in the bubble. The music. Yeah, in the music. We were just trying to keep him alive while we could hear the music. But, but yeah, they actually did have actual voice singing in that song, in, like, a Genesis game. It was it was just amazing. I'll have to go back and listen. Um... Yeah, yeah, Sega's I, done really well with their Sonic music over the years, if nothing else. Right, right. You know, um, that, that again, going back to Nintendo, that Mario and Sonic's different because, well, many reasons, but Nintendo's a little bit different with, with how they treat them compared to Sonic, uh, Sega for Sonic. Um, when fans try to make Mario games, Nintendo just red flags them and shuts them down. And when, when people do it with Sonic games, they're like, awesome, that's great. We love to see our fans doing this. But, you know, at first I'm like, okay, that's really awesome. Nintendo sucks. But then I'm like, Sega doesn't have anything to lose. Yeah. I mean, they really don't have anything to lose. So. Yeah, and in fact, they that's what they've gained with Sonic Mania, was a group of hardcore fans that pretty much did their own thing. And Sega's like, oh, you know what? Yeah, let's make this official. You know, and And that's kind of, I would say, almost indicative of Japan as a whole. You know, being closed off, you know, that's one thing that's hurt Nintendo over the years is not being open to third parties, not being open to other developers, not being open to mobile games. You know, it's something they've realized they've had to change in the last few years because they're not going to survive on the same old formulas. You know, so I think think in the end, yeah, Sega didn't have much to lose because they turned their Sonic franchise into a big bonfire, but... I mean, overall, I think it's also what's made them realize how important it is to listen to outside, you know, voices. Right. Right. And, and they definitely are. So, you know, 2017, this, I think it's this spring, it's coming out. And there's a collector's edition that comes out with, like, a little Sega Genesis. And I think there's a button that'll say the Sega, Sega, when you press it, and with the Sonic statue coming up. Yeah, so, I can't wait for you to buy that for me to make up for No Man's Sky. I'm making up buying you a game because I bought you a game and it wasn't good. Right. That's how that works. <laughs> Two negatives make a positive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Two rights don't make a wrong, but they do make an airplane. That's if you're from Ohio. Oh. This is Illinois. Yeah. Well. Sega. Do we have another topic? That's all. That's it? Okay. Did we talk about them all? No, no, we did VR, we did Bullet Storm, we did Sonic. We did them all. Old NES. Are we still recording? Yeah, thanks for watching, guys. Don't forget, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Right. Like us, share us. At least him. He's worth the like and share. I'm just here.
I love you. <laughs> Let's make love. <laughs>